All right, so I'm gonna try to keep this video quick. So with that being said, going into number one of our seven techniques to beef up your beats, that's gonna be to add more instruments. Now, when I say add more instruments, I don't mean just add anything. You wanna add things that complement each other. So you basically wanna equal out frequency ranges. For example, if you have a bright upright piano playing, you might wanna add some rows to kinda beef up the mid section of the frequency ranges. And say if you don't know what instruments to add, one way to figure it out is by listening to artists that you're inspired by or listen to a genre that you're trying to recreate. This will give you a general understanding of what instruments you should be using in your beats to beef them up just a little bit more. Now for technique number two, that's gonna be EQ and panning. Now with the EQ, you wanna use that to carve out space for each individual instrument in the mix. So you wanna have a pocket for your bass. You wanna have a nice little section for your rows, uh, you want to have a section for your guitar or your bright upright piano and you want to kind of have these instruments sitting in their own little pockets because that way they'll be able to breathe on their own and you also want to manipulate the panning of the instruments that way you can also widen out the stereo field of the track going on to number three that's going to be using compression whether if it's compressing an individual track or compressing the entire master track you want to be using some compression to have more control over the dynamics of your track and to make certain sounds more consistent and present. With that being said, let's go on to number four, and that's going to be reverb and delay. Now, reverb is an easy way to spice up your mix a little bit because using it will create space and depth in certain sections of your mix. But you want to be careful because you could wash out your sounds if you use too much reverb. So make sure you find the right dry, wet, and decay time. For number five, we have mastering and using reference tracks. So for this one, I kind of included two because these are two things that I feel like you should do at the same time, or at least that's what I do. But for mastering, this is a great way to pretty much polish up your beat towards the end of it. So that means you should be adding an EQ to the master track and looking for any resonant frequencies, adding compression, adding the last little bit of limiting, just trying to get that sound right and making sure everything is perfect. But you can also piggyback off of this by using a reference track from an artist that you're inspired by or somebody whose sound you're trying to recreate. This will give you an idea of what a more professional mix would sound like. And it'll also help you identify areas for improvement on your tracks. For number six, that's gonna be making sure the arrangement of your track is on point. Now, when I'm arranging my tracks, I like to keep the energy flowing. And if I'm gonna change the energy, I want to flow into that change smoothly. I don't want it to be abrupt and I don't want it to take too long. I wanna have a nice, smooth, consistent flow and we're going to do different changes. Now, the only way to do that is to have the mindset of making variations and not making loops. You can make loops all day, and if you put them all together, it's gonna to sound like a bunch of loops. But when you make a bunch of different variations, that's when you have the recipes to craft an actual track or an actual song and tell a story. Now, before we go on to number seven, I have a little bonus uh, technique, which is using virtual mixing rooms. Now, some people might agree, some people might disagree with this one. So that's why I made it a bonus. Now, what a virtual mixing room does is imitate a three-dimensional acoustic space in your headphones. So that means it'll put you in the setting of being in a professional, properly treated mixing room, and it'll track your headphones so that it can kind of imitate your head moving around in that mixing room. It's pretty crazy, and I feel like I've noticed a difference after using it on my tracks. But not only does it put you in the setting of being in a mix room, it can also change the different models of headphones. So you'll be able to see what it sounds like for someone who's listening to your track on some AirPods or someone who's listening on, on some Sony headphones or, or Bose headphones. So yeah, I feel like that's a pretty cool investment. Like I said, some people might agree or disagree. So that's why it's a bonus. But going into the last one, which is number seven, that's gonna be to use the proper equipment. So instead of using any old pair of headphones, you wanna get some headphones that are designed for mixing and mastering. That means you want a headphones with a flat mix that gives you the most accurate playback. Now, it may sound worse than, you know, 
making some beats on a pair of beat studios or beat solos or you know i don't really use beats so i don't know it might not sound as good but this will give you the most accurate playback of your track and you'll know exactly what frequencies you need to increase or decrease especially if you're utilizing these other techniques like mastering and using reference tracks you'll definitely notice a difference in the quality in your tracks. But say if you're not using headphones and you're using monitors. So that means you wanna make sure that your monitors are properly spaced out and angled. And you also wanna make sure that your room is properly treated and acoustically on point. Now I understand not everybody has monitors. I don't use monitors, I use headphones. So it's really up to you, which leads me to the closing of this video, which is to always experiment with your tracks. You know, always, try different things, always try something new and see what sticks. You might find something that you like that nobody else is doing, you know? And that's how you develop your own sound and stand out from the crowd. But with that being said, that's gonna be the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you like this style of content, make sure to let me know by liking the video and leaving a comment. But with that being said, I'm gonna get out of here guys. Peace.